Coming up on today's Airborne, Navy's X-47B program wraps up flight tests and is readying for summer sea trials. The Bearhawk takes first place at the Texas STOL Roundup, and fuselage assemblies for the Falcon 5X are joined together. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. As we are wrapping up today's episode of Airborne, our newsroom got a late breaking story. Jim Campbell is here to report. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. I'm afraid we've got some bad news to report. The airshow industry has lost a leading industry icon, Eddie Andrini, a 77 year old airshow performer with over three decades of experience. The winner of numerous awards from the industry, Eddie flew both his Super Stearman, his Yak, and most recently a P-51 in a number of air shows. Loved the business, loved his life, and did a tremendous amount of good for the air show world. At the Travis Air Force Base Open House Air Show Thunder over Solano yesterday, Sunday, about 2 o'clock local time, Eddie was executing a low inverted pass to do a ribbon cut in what was reported to be gusty conditions, a little less gusty than they'd been on Saturday, but gusty nonetheless, when the aircraft from a fairly level but very low position appeared to, at that point, descend abruptly, impact the ground, skid to a stop, and over the period of the ensuing seconds, the aircraft caught fire. Crash crews got there a few minutes after the impact, but unfortunately by that time, Eddie was lost. The Air News Network and our entire team sends its condolences to the family and friends of Eddie Andrini, a number of which we know to be considerable. For the Air News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. The X-47B Unmanned Combat Air System is gearing up for short-based flight test activities in preparation for the next round of sea trials this summer. The program's test team will conduct various test events with the X-47B in an effort to mature air traffic control and ground support standard operating procedures for co-use of airspace between unmanned and manned aircraft. As the first unmanned aircraft to take off and land from a modern aircraft carrier, the X-47B will once again embark on the USS Theodore Roosevelt in the August timeframe. This time, the test team will focus on perfecting flight deck operations and integrating the X-47B with manned carrier aircraft. The proven use of these functions will allow the X-47B vehicle to take off, land, and hold in the same pattern as manned aircraft. The four-place Bearhawk aircraft scored a first-place finish at the Texas STOL Roundup held April 11th through the 13th in Llano, Texas. The winning aircraft, a kit-built airplane manufactured by Avi Pro of Austin, Texas, competed in the heavy touring class. The contest was organized using the same rules as the familiar Valdez Alaska fly-in in competition. The event was well attended according to participants and organizers, with over 200 aircraft present. Each participant was scored on one run from the better of two sets of takeoffs and landings. Piloting the aircraft was Bearhawk Aircraft Demo Pilot Wayne Massey. Massey's combined takeoff and landing distance was 445 feet. Bearhawk Aircraft produces aircraft kits for utility and recreational use. The product line consists of three models. The Bearhawk 4-place, Patrol 2-place, and LSA Tandem 2-place. Mark Goldberg, president of Avi Pro, said, quote, Backcountry flying is what the Bear Hawk does best, end quote. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages. ADSB will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADSB today with the Ben 16 KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADSB out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Over the past two decades, no resource has compiled as much expert valued information about the sport plane world than the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Over 1,500 pages, hundreds of aircraft, dozens of how-tos and directories. 
All this and more will be coming to the sport aviation world soon with the new all-electronic and updatable Sport Plane Resource Guide for your iPad, iPhone, Kindle, tablet, PC, or other electronic devices. Get your order in now www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Dassault Aviation has joined the main center fuselage sub-assemblies of the Falcon 5X, a key milestone in the production program for this new large cabin twin jet. The center fuselage sub-assemblies, the front and rear lower sub-assemblies, and the upper sub-assembly are part of the main center section, which includes the cabin and baggage hold. They arrived in March at Dassault's Biarritz plant in southwestern France and were joined there to the wing center section in mid-April. Next month, the main center section will be joined to the forward section comprising the cockpit, entryway, and galley and the rear section, which carries the empennage and power plant, forming the complete fuselage. First flight is expected in the first half of 2015, and entry into service is planned for mid-2017. And now it's time for our Aero Video of the Week. I'm Sergeant First Class Brian Karst. I'm from Vancouver, Washington. I have 1,423 freefall parachute jumps. When you watch the U.S. Army Golden Knights parachute team at an air show this year, it's pretty amazing. We're pleased to introduce some of this year's team members to our viewers. Parachute jumps. Search Golden Knights Gold Demonstration Team on YouTube. Freefall parachute jumps. Airborne's brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing. Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. For more information about Redbird flight simulations as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. Those who revel in rare aircraft are in for a real treat at EAA AirVenture 2014 as the world's only flying example of the Lockheed's history-making Vega made famous by such aviation legends as Amelia Earhart and Wiley Post, flies to Whitman Regional Airport for all to see. John McGoffin of Tucson, Arizona, has put about 10 flying hours on NC-12288 since its maiden post-restoration flight on December 17th of 2013. That was the first time in more than two decades since a Vega has flown. McGoffin said, quote, It's a long way from Arizona to Wisconsin, but I'm really looking forward to it, end quote. Like the airplane, this will be his first visit to EAA's annual summer gathering, and attendees can see the airplane prominently parked in front of the vintage red barn just south of EAA Plaza. Electric flight continues to move into the realm of practical possibilities, as demonstrated at the 8th Annual Electric Aircraft Symposium, presented April 25th through the 26th in Santa Rosa, California, by the Comparative Aircraft Flight Efficiency Foundation. It set an attendance record according to Foundation President Dr. Brian Seeley. Several well-known EAA members were on the roster including Barnaby Wayfan, who spoke on STOL performance, Brian Carpenter of Rainbow Aviation, who presented his twin-motor electric ultralight, 
and Mark Byerly of Earthstar Aircraft, who spoke about his Eagle electric plane. Well, that's our program. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.